Hey everyone, so just to share a little bit about myself, um, since the very beginning of my life, um, I've had quite an intimate connection with um, infectious diseases. So I was born in Canada. Um, I'm ethnically Iranian, I'm Persian. I've never been there myself. Um, I grew up in China since I was the age of six. And so very soon after I was born, um, like after a year when I just started walking, my whole family moved to Brazil, um, to Manaus <clears throat> in the northern Amazon like area. And basically they wanted to live there and move there and um, and it was only, and they've then they sold everything um, that they owned, the house and everything. And so when we got there um, soon after, it was only like six days where they were giving me a bath and I was like drinking the water because it was so hot. And and basically I think I got like giardia, but I don't, but they don't know, but my parents don't know which disease it was. So basically soon after that, we flew back to Canada and we had to be quarantined. So um, that was the first, and I didn't know this till I was like much older. But basically one of the reasons why I studied infectious diseases was in 2003, I was like 15 years old, and that was the pivotal point that basically decided my whole career of um, like studying infectious diseases. Because um, as a foreigner in China, like all of my friends were like leaving, they all left the country, and my parents, they were not scared at all they didn't seem to even register what was happening and so there was no such fear that was happening so in my immediate family there was none of this like panic and chaos but outside everyone else was like leaving and in fact even the friends were like telling my parents how irresponsible they were for not like taking us back and so they didn't really care. But at one point in the summer time, um, I had left with a family friend um, to go, for me it was like more of like a summer vacation. Um, but to them, they, they, I think they maybe felt like they were like saving us, saving me in particular. And, um, and for me to travel, to have traveled during the panic and to be quarantined and to like get your temperature and like all that stuff when you were at the age of 15, that was to me really something that influenced me a lot. And for me, the thing that really shook my core was to see what is this thing that people are so scared about that, that just makes them behave like this. And, and that was the thing that really fascinated me. That I felt like that sort of collective fear just resided in my body as a heavy metal and motivated me basically to study the field and be like, what is this all about? Um, so when I got to university, I studied, um, so my undergrad is in um, uh, life sciences. I wanted, to, it was tunnel vision to become a doctor. Um, and I always wanted to be an infectious disease doctor. I tried to apply to medical school, I didn't get in. And then I went to do my master's at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine in control of infectious diseases. And after that, I was gonna do medicine. So after I went to the London School, I was so grateful that I finally found out why um, SARS basically was happening. I was like, what was, what was up with the healthcare system? What was up? with like people like what is it that causes these sort of like global outbreaks and stuff like that and outbreaks were always something that was like the most interesting to me i always wondered what is this thing that in such a short period of time it kills millions of people and like for me the most important the most interesting thing was to see its spiritual light but more on that later but basically when I was in um, the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, I then um, went to the World Health Organization and I worked there um, on H7N9, Ebola, and MERS-CoV. This was in 2014 and so it was that outbreak. And the day I left was the day that Ebola was um, declared a public health emergency of international concern. And so that was when things all get elevated to the highest degree and basically all the festering, I was there for, for that and to see how people were reacting and panicking and just not reacting maybe. 
even quickly enough for it to get to that stage of public health emergency of international concern. So then after that, um, I basically, I went to Singapore and I studied and I worked at the National University of Singapore um, at the public health school and then at the Center for Biomedical Ethics. And basically during that time, I um, went on pilgrimage and kind of had like a divine intervention. And throughout this entire time, I was still applying to medical school and still tunnel visioned to becoming a physician, like an infectious disease specialist. And um, it was during this time that uh, I went to become a, I went on pilgrimage and I had basically like a divine inf intervention <laughs> during that time. And it was kind of like intercepted my life path and was like, I did not put you on this planet to become a doctor. Like I, I put you here to do like global health. And so because God knew how many times I was willing to like apply to medical school, he knew that for me, like it required divine intervention to stop my tunnel focus. So that to me, it was a huge shock. I was super depressed. Still, if I think about it a little too hard right now, I could cry. Um, but when I think about what was planned for me, basically of global health, I mean, that's like helping way more people. So why not, right? And hopefully through this channel, actually, maybe I'll, I'll be able to get to do that. But basically after that, as a compromise to myself, um, as a sadness that I did not get a formal opportunity to study anatomy and physiology, I decided to do a yoga training. And I was, I was like, at least let me give myself that if God's not going to give it to me. Because um, I was super fascinating and passionate about the science of medicine. I was just never really good at it. <laughs> um, and so when I went to do my yoga teacher training, then it was became very clear that this, I started, I was actually like sharing a lot of, of my shadowing work and previous like science, like knowledge with the class. And I realized that I needed to even that was even that basic teacher training was not enough and I needed to up it. So then later on, I went to do integrative yoga therapy. So that's kind of like my path of like where I have moved. And so after Singapore, I moved back to China and there was kind of a couple things that it was almost like Singapore kind of spit me out in a way that there were a couple things that happened with like the academic institutions that I wasn't very happy with. And I kind of, when I came back to China, I was super depressed. Um, I was really angry with the world because within the ethics department, there were several un, very unethical things that were happening. And part of the reason why I left was due to this in some way. And for me, it kind of took a hit to my soul because I was like, if I cannot find sanctuary in the ethics department, then where can I find sanctuary? It was kind of like one of those scenes like in Hunchback in Notre Dame, you know, when he like pounds on the church and he's like, sanctuary, give me sanctuary. That's how I felt like, that's how I feel like, and I feel that everyone looking at this, watching this video in some sense has that. It's like, where, where, where can I find sanctuary in this world if the churches are not okay or if, ethics departments are not working out, then where is it? Where is the place that I'm gonna find solace? And then at some point you realize you, you are your only solace really. And finding those people that are the same minds and your tribe, that's where you're gonna be thriving. So anyways, now we are basically, I have just emerged from two years of this, I would say, not clinically di diagnosed depression, but I would say I was pretty depressed about the state of the world. And only now, in this immediate crisis, has this really birthed me out and gotten me to act. Because I have no choice. <laughs> if I want to live, and if I want to save the people that I love around me, and also, if I really, truly, came on this earth to help other people, 
then this is the reason why um, I'm here. So that's my background in a nutshell. Um, so yeah, if there's any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And yeah, that's basically my story in a nutshell. And so if I start sounding like I'm talking like a lot of science or if I'm talking a lot of spirituality that nobody knows, please, please write it in the comments to, because I can't know what everyone's understanding is with these kind of things. And so there's gonna be topics that I'm gonna be merging together. So if there's any one of them that you're unclear or clear of, or if I'm using terms that are not, not that doesn't make any sense, just know that that was my background. And so to be able to learn how to communicate that with everyone, I know that there's gonna be like a learning curve there. So my purpose is to get, is, to, is for everyone to understand what I'm trying to say. And so if I'm not saying anything clearly, please, let me know and ask because I won't know if this is something that's clear and as long as I see a comment that's not clear then I would be happy to share and elaborate some more on that so thank you for watching this video um, I hope you give it a like and subscribe to my channel and please do share these videos um, upcoming videos of the outbreak and quarantining because I really think it will help and be a comfort hopefully to as many people as possible so I'm hoping that this will help like literally the world so I can't like type in I know I'm speaking in English right now um, and many people of you don't and so if someone does speak another language please translate them for subtitles and um, do that as a service because I really think during this outbreak like it's not that I, I care really about like that I what I have to say is so important but what I care what I think is that what I'm sharing is that this is one of the things that it relates to like absolutely everyone on a spiritual level. And this is where all languages are required in order to just get the message across. And so if you know something, please give your time to write the subtitles of this. Um, so yeah, uh, that would be your service during your quarantine um, that you could do for humanity is to help share this kind of knowledge. And so. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.